Hey, what's going on guys? How's it going? This lesson is about how to read tabs. Okay, so what tabs are is tabs is the guitar player's way of reading sheet music. All right, now if you know how to read sheet music, that's awesome. If you don't know how to read sheet music, as a lot of guitar players, especially self-taught guitar players, uh, do not know how to do, tabs are the next best thing, okay? Tabs allow guitar players to communicate how to play licks, phrases, chords, and all kinds of stuff that are found in songs and other lessons um, without needing to necessarily understand how to read uh, typical sheet music, okay? So this lesson is going to be about how to read tabs and a couple of the, um, you know, the symbols that you're going to see in tabs. Okay, so with that said, let me zoom in and uh, show you how this is done. Okay, so what you see here on your screen is an example of a guitar tab. Alright, so basically how this works is you see six horizontal lines. So each one of those horizontal lines represents one of the six strings of the guitar. Okay, so starting, if you're looking at your screen, starting from the lowest line, that represents the low E string. Okay, and then the highest line on your screen represents the high E string. Okay, and the six lines is one of each of the six strings, okay? Now the numbers that you see are telling you what fret to play on each of the strings, all right? So using this example that you see, it's telling you to start out on the seventh fret of the A string. And then it's telling you to play the ninth fret of the D string. And then it's telling you to play the seventh fret of the high E string. And then you play eight, 10, and then eight, and then seven, and then the five, and then the seven. Okay, so this tab is telling you to do this. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. You can see how this is a lot easier than reading music. So this is very helpful to communicate ideas between guitar players without the need to read music. Okay, so with that said, you're going to come across some uh, some different types of symbols in these tabs, all right, which represent different techniques that you're going to use. So the first symbol that you're going to see is going to be the hammer and the pull, all right. In some forms of tabs, you'll see hammers denoted as H and pulls denoted as P. But in the tabs I use, I use the curved line as shown. So here you see the first one is going from the 7 to the 8. That's a hammer. That's what that curved line represents. So instead of playing the 7 and then the 8, I'm hammering from the 7 to the 8. Okay, I only pluck the string once, but then I hammer. Okay, and then the next one is going from 8 to 7, but that's a pull-off. So I start on the 8, I pluck the note once, and I pull off sounding the note of the 7. Okay, and then the last one is a hammer and then a pull. That's what that curved line represents. So that's telling me to start on the 7, pluck the note, hammer to the 8, and then immediately pull back off to the 7. Only one pluck of the string, and then I do a hammer and pull. Okay, so those are hammers and pulls. The next type of symbol you're going to see is going to be slides. Okay, so the three examples I show here, one example is telling you to slide to the seventh fret of the A string. Okay, but it's not telling you where to start at, which means you can start anywhere. It doesn't matter where you start. You just have to end on the seven. So you just slide. Okay, you just slide up to the seven, starting at any random location. All right, and then the next one is telling you to slide down to the seven, starting at any random location, okay? Okay, you just want to slide to the seven. Now the third one is telling you to start on the seven and slide to the nine, okay? So you see these lines aren't curved as in the hammer and pulls, these are straight lines. They indicate slides, okay? So I'm starting on the seven and I'm sliding to the nine. So those are slides. Now what you're going to have is you're going to have bends. And here is five different types of bends that you're going to encounter. Okay, So 
starting on the 14th fret of the G string as it tells you to do in the tab it's telling you to do a half bend a full bend and a one and a half bend alright now what a half bend is is you want to start on the original note the 14th fret of the G string and you want to bend it until it achieves the pitch of either the next fret up okay which would be a half bend two frets up which would be a full bend or three frets up which would be a one and a half bend okay so starting out with the first one I want to achieve the pitch of that of the 15th fret okay so I'm trying to go like this but I want to do that by bending okay so now with the full bend I want to achieve the pitch of this note so I want to go from the 14th to the 16th but I want to do so by bending okay now I want to do a one and a half bend so I want to achieve the pitch of the 17th fret okay so I want to bend to that note Okay, so that's a one and a half bend. Now the next thing you see is known as a bend release. That means you start on the note that it tells you to, which is the 14th fret of the G string. You bend up as much as it tells you to. It's telling you to do a full bend. So you're going to the 16th fret, and then you want to pull, and then you want to release the bend and end on your original starting note. So I want to essentially go like this. But I want to do so by bending. Okay, so that's a bend and then a release. Now the final type of bend that you're going to see is a pre-bend release. That means you you start with the note bended, okay, but you don't sound the original note. You bend first, then you pluck the note, then you release. So this is telling me to do a full pre-bend release. So I want to start with the string bent up this much, and then I want to come down. Okay, so that is a pre-bend release. That's a nice technique to use in your playing. Okay, so the next type of symbol you're going to see is going to be the vibrato symbol. Okay, so this example is up here on the 14th fret again, and this just means to just means to give some vib shake the string. You hear singers do this with their voice all the time, okay? It's called vibrato. I was actually doing that in some of the previous examples in this lesson because it's kind of like second nature. A lot of most guitar players just naturally add vibrato to the notes. Okay, so this symbol is telling you to do that. All right, so now the next example that you see here is a chord, okay? So now all of the notes are on top of one another whereas in the all the other examples you would see a number and then you would see another number and they wouldn't be on top of each other but as shown here they're on top of each other meaning that you're supposed to play this, the notes at the same time so this is telling you you don't play anything on the low E string or the A string you play the D string open as indicated by the zero you then put your you then fret these notes second fret of the G string third fret of the B string and second fret of the high E string okay so you're playing all those at the same time alright and the result is a D major chord okay now a lot of times instead of using this form of communicating chords I'm going to use a chord diagram Okay, so now if you look at this chord diagram, this is essentially telling you to do the exact same thing, but it's just a different method of communicating the exact same thing, okay? So, chords can be communicated through tabs, as you see, or they can be communicated through chord diagrams. I generally choose whichever one I feel is easier to communicate the idea that I'm trying to get across, okay? But just know that they are the exact same thing, okay? Both of these are telling you to play a D major chord 
using only four strings and not playing the low E string or the A string. Okay, so this last example is just an example of a, a tab run that you might see. Okay, so this is telling you to start up here on the 15th fret of the high E string and essentially go like this. And then you have one of those pre-bend releases down to the 12. Then you slide up to the 14, an indefinite slide. And then to the 12, then back to the 14, then a slide to the 14. Okay, so this whole run would Okay, so that's how you would read that, and then it ends using an E major chord. Okay, that last thing is is a chord. All the notes are on top of each other, so you want to end with the chord. So you're going. Okay, so that would be how you read that tab. And that's pretty much most of the symbols you're going to see in tabs. You may encounter some other symbols here and there, but it's pretty obvious, it's pretty straightforward of what you need to do, okay? And what you want to do is you want to listen to the song as you're going and playing along with these tabs because sometimes there's little typographical errors in tabs or there's always little things that the tab writers, which is me, I write my own tabs, but there's little things that we may miss here and there. So you, you want to use these in conjunction with listening to the song, okay? And using tabs while listening to the song, you can pick up how to do it, okay? This is a very, very good laid out way of explaining how to play songs and also how to commute other types of theory things. All right, so with that said, that is how to read guitar tabs. If you have any questions, hit me up. Thank you.